another benefit that earthworms bring, apart from improving soil structure, we already mentioned this morning, um, one of the most important things that they do for soil um, activity is improve the rate of nutrient cycling. Um, now, if you want pasture to perform really well, you don't want nutrients sitting around for months or years, even longer, than they really need to. And that might be in the form of, um, say, old cow dung, it looks quite fossilised um, after a few months and can even last for years, um, lying around on the surface, or um, dead plant material lying around on the surface or just under the surface as a thatch. Now those um, uh, those nutrients that are within that um, organic matter <coughs> sitting around for longer than is really necessary are going to be held up from entering back into the system that feeds off the uh, not just the plant uptake uh, from the soil but also biological activity <coughs> in general in the soil. So the microorganisms and the earthworms and other soil animals within the soil are relying on that nice efficient um, uh, cycling of nutrients to be able to bring about um, the best effect. Now the earthworms have a digestive system um, that's like a, a biological reactor. Most of the digestion is taking place uh, by virtue of the bacteria that are hosted within the earthworm. Um, and the way that the earthworm promotes good bacterial activity is providing um, not just a, a moist environment, um, slightly warmer environment than the soil itself, but also an environment where it's been taking in um, organic matter as well as soil particles, so bringing in a concentrated area, uh, a concentrated amount of material. Um, it's also uh, got a buccal cavity that sucks in with the suction force that material from the soil and breaks it down into smaller pieces. Um, as it passes through that cavity um, down the esophagus, it gets pumped up with calcium bicarbonate. So a healthy earthworm in a healthy soil with good calcium levels is going to be putting a lot of calcium bicarbonate into there so that the pH um, within the digestive system of the earthworm is significantly higher than the soil um, that was being taken in in the first place. It might reach 8 or as, even as high as 10 on the pH scale. Very high for a soil, um, uh, but ideal for that bacterial activity that's occurring. And then by the time the cast comes out, the pH is at a, uh, out the other end of the earthworm, the pH is at a more moderate level, but it's um, been um, improved in nutrient availability to the extent of maybe six or ten times the availability of some nutrients compared to the material that was going into the earthworm in the first place. So it's that nutrient cycling that's very important. Um, the breaking down into small pieces, I mentioned the buccal cavity, I missed out one of the other uh, vital features of many earthworms and that's a gizzard. So much like a bird gizzard, but on a smaller scale of course, um, it's got these uh, fine particles of say sand, um, even uh, limestone or fertiliser material that's in there, helping break down that organic matter into smaller pieces surface area even further and that's going to help with that rate with which the nutrients can be released. Now the tie-in with mycorrhizal fungi is that mycorrhizal fungi are one of the best ways of providing a calcium source to help replenish those um, calcium bicarbonate secreting glands, the calciferous glands in the earthworm. The mycorrhizal fungi growing in association with plant roots, um, actually the best example is with um, uh, clover root, white clover even more so, but um, in this case clover roots are characteristically um, wiry um, root systems, white clover not as deep as a red clover, um, not very adventurous roots, not very efficient at picking up um, phosphorus um, because phosphorus hardly moves around in the soil at all pretty much got to rely on the root system moving towards the um, towards the phosphorus to um, get that phosphate uh, uptaken by the plant. So one of the ways in which clovers can improve their uptake of phosphorus is to have good mycorrhizal infection on them. The mycorrhizal fungi grow partly inside the root but also largely outside the root. Instead of um, a clover root being able to pick up phosphorus from within just one millimetre of the plant root, 
it's um, now able, with a good mycorrhizal infection, to pick up phosphorus from as far, far away as seven centimetres from the root. Much further uh, from the root, um, a great increase in effective root volume that improves the uptake of all nutrients, but phosphorus in particular. Um, also very good at picking up uh, zinc and very uh, efficient at picking up moisture as well. So if you want better uh, drought um, management or manageability, um, then the um, good mycorrhizal infection is going to be good for that as well. Now the fungi, um, these mycorrhizal fungi growing on the plant roots, they're very good at picking up calcium as well. And they store a lot of that calcium as calcium oxalate. They don't particularly use much calcium <coughs> themselves, but they're very good reservoirs of that calcium. As the earthworm comes along and finds a dying plant root, it will eat that dying plant root, uh, or senescing root, um, and the mycorrhizal fungi that are on it, taking up that calcium oxalate and replenishing um, those calciferous glands that it has. So one of the best forms of getting calcium into those earthworms. Um, at that same time, on a senescing root, um, the fungus has recognised that uh, time's just about to um, come to an end and it starts producing a whole lot more spores. Um, so as well as feeding the earthworm with uh, calcium, <coughs> it's feeding the earthworm with um, its own spores as well. And these spores are able to transfer through um, the earthworm's digestive system and effectively the earthworm's um, able to um, transfer the mycorrhizal from one part of the paddock to another. Um, so very efficient um, vehicles at getting that, um, that fungus spread around a whole lot more. Ways to get um, good mycorrhizal levels and therefore good earthworm levels um, is to uh, not graze um, the plant's too hard, so you're leaving more energy reserves within the plant after grazing. Um, also, um, if you don't graze too hard, you tend to not prune the roots too much. If you, if you overgraze, there's a bit of a mirror effect that's happening under the soil as well, so that you'll have less uh, root volume in there. So if you're trying to clean up pastures in the winter, what about grazing then? I mean, when the plant's not actively growing, can you graze it hard then? Does it have an effect? Um, it'll, it'll still have an effect of um, reducing the amount of reserves that, that that plant has to go at again in the spring, but um, you, you just do what you can within that management system. So by having it most of the time, low grazing, um, uh, uh, better grazing residuals left, um, then you're going to be generally promoting a deeper, um, more active root system that's going to also be feeding more carbohydrates back into the mycorrhizal fungi. That's the main reason the mycorrhizal fungi are in association with the plant roots is to get those carbohydrates from them. And in return, what the plant gets from that mycorrhizal infection, um, sounds like a bad word, infection, but it's a really good thing for that improved nutrient uptake and also improved water uptake. Um, the way um, uh, in which the earthworms also promote the spreading of um, mycorrhizal fungi and promote biological activity in general through that nutrient cycling also happens to increase the amount of mycorrhizal fungi. So it is, it's, it's a relationship that's going both ways there. Um, as the um, mycorrhizal fungi um, <coughs> levels improve, you're also going to have uh, indirect soil structural uh, benefits from that, um, better uh, root growth <coughs> that's going to help open up the soil more and um, provide more food um, for earthworms that are there. A lot of biological, <coughs> microbiological activity in the soil is centred around plant roots and relies on the amount of um, uh, nutrient that those, uh, those uh, carbohydrates that the roots are able to leak um, and that's improved again by having those better grazing residuals and um, by having um, better uh, nutrient um, potential there. So one of the main nutrients, as I mentioned before, that um, mycorrhizal fungi really improve the uptake of is phosphate. One of the worst things for phosphate, uh, for mycorrhizal levels in the pasture is high available phosphate. If you put on a lot of very available phosphate, it's one of the main things that you can do that will actually reduce the amount of mycorrhizal fungi that are there. So indirectly bad for earthworms, indirectly um, bad for the efficiency 
of um, plant uptake, um, not just of that uh, of phosphate, the efficiency of phosphate, but also the uptake of other nutrients that the plants are able to um, access better with good mycorrhizal levels.